Hello everybody, Happy New Year and welcome back to Strictly Story Mode Gaming. Friends, I hope you're keeping healthy and letting the magic of gaming keep you sane. Last year, I've really dug in deep with pixel art titles. When games are constantly forcing shiny photorealistic hyper detailed reality on your eyeballs, you start to become numb to it. When nothing is left to the visual imagination, well, it gets kind of flabby. Pixel art lets your imagination breathe and do some lifting. It's an acquired taste, and to those who have an appreciation for this particular form of interactive 2D art, we're so lucky indie devs are actively creating new variants of it. Today, I wanted to share with you a game I totally fell in love with last summer. Hyperlight Drifter is an indie 2D hack and slash from Heart Machine. On the surface, the skeletal frame of this game is nothing extraordinary. Yet, this is one of the most unique and compelling gaming experiences I've had. You play a drifter infected with an illness traveling these fallen lands in search of a cure, while hacking and slashing your way through the creatures of a spreading corruption. In one of the most intriguing of game openings, we are shown an energy cataclysm that devastates the land along with an ensuing battle of titans. Now, exposition is the true enemy of natural storytelling, and Hyperlight Drifter grants you the unadulterated pleasure of organically and slowly piecing parts of an intentionally cryptic story. This game deliberately feeds you only the vaguest of fragments that are wide open for interpretation, so instead of pinning down an ambiguous narrative, I thought we would examine how the story is revealed and why that allows for gamers like me to experience much deeper meaning. Relatively rare for a pixel art title, Hyperlight Drifter is entirely nonverbal. Pixel art titles are often made on a budget, and unvoiced text is by far the cheapest tool to augment content, but this game, it completely goes its own way. It doesn't lay anything out for you explicitly, not only for the story, but for almost every aspect of the game. Even figuring out basic things like in-game currency, you have to infer from symbols. If you love deciphering pictograms, this is a game for you. I only knew the yellow circuit board like things were money when I first visited what I thought was a weapons dealer and realized I didn't have enough to buy anything. Also this dude is a highly specialized swordsmith. One of the most effective use of visual language in this game is the communication with the survivors you come across in this fallen land. They weave their tragic tale in a concise trio of images and the violence and persecution they suffered is unmistakable. The next part I'm leaving unvoiced so you can see a story for yourself. As much as I love the visual design and soundscape of Hyperlight Drifter, it's really the surprising emotional pull of this game that moved me. I thought we would take a short detour and examine how games try to enter your heart and why I think for me even such simplified 2D imagery in this game so effectively conveyed complex themes and emotions. Many games that have ambitions to be considered art try to capture and plumb the emotional depth of human experience. Now, there's various ways you can engage the player's emotions. One of the most effective tools to stir complex emotions is through music, but we'll hold off for later and start with a discussion about direct and indirect approaches. At one extreme end, we have the method Italian operas, Korean dramas, telenovelas, and Ori games use shamelessly. Both Ori games, Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps, push or rather shove the exact emotions they want you to feel. Even if you know absolutely nothing, nothing about this game, the universal response of witnessing the death of a beloved parent figure is, if you didn't get this, don't feel bad. The implicit method is significantly more difficult to pull off. 
The game will often provide more open constructs where the player can hang their own personal interpretations, which often can lead to deeper emotional meaning. So Journey is the poster child for this type of gamer engagement. The game is an abstracted retelling of the hero's journey. You are presented with challenges like making your way against these icy winds. The game is not forcing you to feel any specific emotion. Any meaning you attribute to your struggle is shaped by the gamer's life experiences, the type of loss they've experienced, the heavy burdens they're carrying. Only you can provide the meaning, or not. Journey, which lacks combat, is surprisingly a game that has much in common with the Hyperlight Drifter. Both are a wordless hero's journey through the ruins of an advanced civilization where nothing is explained. You are guided by a mysterious higher being. Both games, through their cryptic narrative, invite you to attribute your own interpretation and meaning. And I love them both. Back to our Drifter. At first, I couldn't understand how this pixel art title brought out such complex, intense feels about coping with our own mortality and continuing on in the face of death. Was it the extraordinary plague-ridden times we were going through? I went online and a lot of other gamers wrote that they were similarly moved by this game. When I was playing, I didn't know that the game designer Alex Preston suffers from congenital heart disease. The way Preston wove his own life struggles tightly into this game with utter passion produced a unique work of art that really resonated with me in unexpected ways. I can only point out the most obvious connections. Our hero is sick and dying, and you will start to bleed when you're low on health. His frailty lasts well throughout the game, which helped me acknowledge my very own limitations. I've never retreated so many times in a game before. Unlike most action games where you become increasingly an all-powerful god from constant looting and upgrades, the drifter remains relatively frail. You do get more health and slightly stronger weapons, but so do your enemies. So even on easy mode, the combat was challenging for me and I always barely scraped by. As you play this game, you will wonder, what's up with these diamonds everywhere? It's not surprising given Preston's obsession with the heart, these diamonds, or for the mathematically inclined rhombuses or equilateral quadrilaterals, are divided into four sections and they are an abstraction for the chambers of the heart. Yes, yes, the atrium and the ventricles are not the same size in real life, but come on. <laughs> Being a mutant with only thumbs in my hands, I wasn't able to finish this game. And spent only about 10 hours. Given that combat is such a critical pillar of this game, does being a filthy casual still provide a worthwhile experience? Absolutely. Listening to the atmospheric soundtrack by Disaster Piece is half the game for me. Just exploring this beautiful world, vibing out to the superb soundtrack was one of the most pleasurable gaming experiences of last year. Despite being lo-fi even by pixel art standards, Hyperlight Drifter possesses a sophistication and artistry that is quite distinct in a sea of pixel art titles. If you love geometric aesthetics and animal designs, there really is none better than Hyperlight Drifter. In my book, this game is one of the great pixel art masterpieces. Due to the inherent lower fidelity of its 2D pixel art and the cryptic nature of the narrative, this game gives your imagination so much room to roam. This is not a game for everyone, but for those who seek such freedom, this game can really spark your imagination and move your heart. Originally, I had ambitions to stuff seven games in this video, but we will stop here. Thank you for joining me, let's meet again in another world.